But first to date, the growing fears amongst some South Australian women that their digital mammograms may not have detected the presence of breast cancer. Now we know radiologists are reviewing tests conducted on 54,000 women here between September 2010 and June this year with real and growing concern that some cancers may have been missed. Now, of course, there is a long way to go with this. The tests have just begun, as I understand it. But there is, as we read today, the potential for legal action. Now, law firm here in Adelaide, Tyndall Gask Bentley, has been approached by more than one upset couple and here to tell us more about that and the potential for a class action suit against the state government is personal injury law specialist, a partner from Tyndall Gask Bentley Law Firm, Tim White. Tim, thanks for coming into the studio this afternoon. Pleasure, Brenda. Who have you been approached by? How many women and couples have, have approached you in the last few days? In the last few days, we've had contact from four women so far and mm. not surprisingly, they're gravely concerned about uh, what's transpired over the last few months in their lives. So what do we know? Well, we know uh, that it is early days. Uh, there's a lot of investigation still to be undertaken. However, from the period of time that you just said between September 10 to June 12, um, the scans are being reviewed and uh, some question has been raised about whether or not they were accurate during mm. that period. And from a number of the women that I've talked to, unfortunately, they had scans that were uh, clear, no sign of cancer, and subsequent to that, they've noticed uh, a lump or lumps develop and been diagnosed with breast cancer. It's just horrendous. And in one specific case, as I understand it, that, that lady has had to undergo a mastectomy? That's correct. The uh, cancer... Uh, was very aggressive and she's uh, had uh, surgery, also chemotherapy and several months, six months or more off of work whilst uh, undergoing those procedures. What time frame, and can you tell us this, what time frame, what was the lag between her being cleared of any cancer to her noticing quite an aggressive tumour? Months, not, not long at all, uh, mm. which she, not surprisingly, was concerned uh, that of noticing the lumps firstly. However, she took uh, prompt action, as you would expect, and consulted her GP. And uh, upon further investigation, uh, the worst possible scenario that you'd expect, that it was diagnosed as being a form of cancer. And uh, subsequent to that, she's undergone, as I said, the surgery and now the chemotherapy. We don't know, do we, yet, if there has been a clerical error, if there has been misdiagnosis, if there's been a faulty machine, or if it's just been a statistical error. We don't know those answers yet, do we? Exactly. That's that's the, the very important point that, uh, of course, uh, there's a lot of investigation to be done, uh, and I'm sure that'll come out in due course. Uh, and it could be a combination of those various things that you've referred to. And, of course, I'm sure everyone would like to know what has led to this and uh, if it is as a result of an error or, or not, because it may well not be. Mm. Do you envisage more phone calls to your office over the, the coming days and weeks? We do. Uh, given the number of uh, scans that they're reviewing in the order of 54,000, uh, so it is a very large number and it's over a period of approximately two years. So I expect that we'll continue to receive phone calls from concerned women. You are a personal injury specialist. You've dealt with class actions of this sort in the past. Tell us how they work and what's the potential for a suit in this case? Sure. This, if Depending on what transpires with the investigations that we just talked about, they may involve a it may involve a class action in terms of a group of women to have a class action in Australia it needs to be seven or more people affected by a common course of events or there of course is an alternative that it could uh, be an individual action where one female circumstances are very unique and so she pursues uh, her loss or losses uh, in her own right so it could be uh, it could be either, either a class action, which is a group of 
people seven or more mm. or it could be a person pursuing the claim in their own um, individual circumstances. Now I'm no lawyer but it would seem to me that a class action presents as a more powerful united front in court. Is that is that how it works? It is. I mean there's uh, a group of individuals that are affected by similar circumstances so uh, you then have a multiple of people involved and so the damages, the compensation uh, is usually larger in a class action. Not always the case but normally the damages that are payable because you have multiple people involved is usually more considerable in a class action environment. The two different actions involve similar issues in terms of you're looking at the pain and suffering that a person's experienced, lost income, mm. medical expenses, um, psychological worry, ongoing disfigurement if they've had surgery that then leads to permanent uh, disfigurement. So mm -hmm. they're similar issues in terms of the damages, but usually in a class action they're higher. How do you go personally dealing with cases of, of this type when you've got you know, people coming to you who I would imagine would be incredibly emotionally distraught over what's what's happening to them. It is, and and thankfully uh, the medical profession plays a very important role in that. So, um, as is the case here, from the women I've talked to already, they've consulted their GPs, they've had reassurance, or at least had some answers provided to them by medical specialists. Um, quite often. Uh, a psychologist will become involved in providing treatment. So those other professions are very important in assisting these women. It's important not to be talking, I think, about money at this point when we are talking about the health of women. But it's got to be said that we've clarified that there's still a long way to go. We don't know the reasons for th these abnormal results. But if we look to the future, there is the potential, is there not, for the state government to be hit with a multi-million dollar lawsuit? There is that potential. Uh, there's a lot of uh, questions to be answered, but um, most certainly at its most severe, um, there's a large number of women potentially affected and the ramifications, obviously, of a condition uh, such as cancer is long-term and um, sometimes fatal. Mm -hmm. So this could be a uh, very considerable liability. What similar cases have you worked on in the past or are working on now? We're currently involved with the uh, breast implant class action that's being investigated as well, which involved the French uh, manufacturer PIP. Uh, so that... Uh, uh, is a large action as well involving um, in the order of a thousand women throughout Australia that have been affected. Was that like collagen leaking or what, what was that? Uh, a silicon breast implant that's um, had some faults uh, with it that are being investigated right. as we speak. Right, right. And in the past you've done... Other, other medical negligence claims, right. whether they arise from surgery or uh, misdiagnosis and various other personal injury claims. Mm. Look, it's, uh, it's sad that we need to talk to you under these uh, circumstances, but we will uh, keep a keen eye on, on, uh, on how this progresses and uh, please keep us informed of, of you know, what happens from your, from your point of view. Certainly will. Partner from law firm uh, Tyndall Gask Bentley, uh, located here in Light Square, Tim White. Thanks so much for your time and for coming into the studio this afternoon.